TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high-quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. Are autonomous self-driving cars the future, and when will this future actually arrive? Well, I'm going to find out in this video because, maybe you can tell behind me, uh, that's the SkyTrain station here near Phoenix Airport. I just landed in Arizona, and I want to try an autonomous car. And I know there is a, a service here, Waymo One, uh, basically a Uber or a Lyft equivalent, but autonomous only vehicles. So I've never been in a fully autonomous vehicle in public. So I figured give it a go and um, take you along with me for the ride. So let me launch Waymo One. So I just downloaded the app. I added my credit card information to it. Here it found me. And I'm really hungry. So I just flew here. Let's see. And I've been searching for restaurants. This restaurant seems to be... Choose a pickup. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a good pickup location. Casa restaurant. Here's my credit card. 20 minute pickup. Next. $17.09. Okay. Your trip. I'm by myself. Request car. Keep only while using the app. All right. So it's telling me to. I think to go over here to the train station. All right, got it. Ooh, I'm gonna have uh, I-Pace, a Jaguar I-Pace electric car. So not only is this an autonomous experience, it's also an electric experience. Okay, cool. All righty, so I'm gonna go over here to the train station. It is Wednesday, and I guess there's nobody here on a Wednesday. Okay, done. See you in five minutes. Rider only mode. So I've never used Waymo One, but I have been in other prototype autonomous vehicles before, but always in a controlled environment with engineers riding in them. And I'm wondering if this is going to be just a very simple, fully autonomous experience. All right, I'm gonna make a cut here and uh, get back to you when the car arrives. Okay, oh, I see the car. Looks like a Jaguar. It looks to have quite a few radar systems. Wait, it went by. I guess it wanted me to be in this area, but near the beginning of this ride share area. Okay, here it is. Okay, I'm gonna get in. Hold on. How do I... Oh, it says that is me. Okay. I just pick up. Oh, I'm sorry. It says unlock. I'm a dummy. Okay. Good to see you, Andre. It says good to see you, Andre. Okay. Wow, it's pleasant music in here. And let me see. I am going to buckle in. Okay. 
Okay. All right, guys, I'm buckled in. I'm going to start the drive. Slide. Hello from Waymo. As we get going, just give us one minute to cover a few riding tips. This experience may feel futuristic, but the need to buckle up is the same as always. So keep your seatbelt fastened, please. If you're traveling with little ones or expecting, please see the seat back card for more information. We'll do all the driving. So please don't touch the steering wheel or pedals during your ride. For any questions, you can find helpful info in the Waymo app, like how we keep our cars safe and clean. You can also use the app or passenger screen to speak to a rider support agent at any time. In the rare case of an emergency, please keep your seatbelt fastened and remain in the car unless there's an urgent need to exit. Okay, so it's just telling me a few instructions. I hope you could hear that. It basically talked about uh, buckling up, uh, some of the safety and cleaning instructions, and now it's taking me on a, well, to where I want to be, which is that restaurant, so I can get some food. Um, okay, well, first of all, here's my first impression. Not about the car, about the autonomous experience. I feel like this car is driving like a person would. And here's what I mean. About five or six years ago, I was in the prototype autonomous vehicle. It was a Ford Fusion. And this was with the Ford team. And that autonomous prototype years ago seemed overly cautious. It was too, I felt it was driving too slowly. It was unsure. It was overly cautious I would say uh, this car it feels like it accelerates per fairly you know fairly well it's driving down this kind of side road away from the train station and away from the airport and of course it's using its blinker and I can see exactly you know how fast it's going it's telling me the exact directions it made a full stop at the stop sign there's a car approaching and it doesn't i don't feel like the car is like wandering from lane to lane or trying to be readjusting it seems very sure of itself i like that that's that's a good thing okay now it's making a turn on kind of a busier street. And so I know there's a couple of more other things uh, happening. First of all, I can monitor this on my app. If I need, if something is happening, if I need urgent help, I can actually dial up urgent help. And there is a camera, I think monitoring right there on the ceiling. And I can actually speak to a, a human in a call center and um, tell them about my issue. Or I can make the car pull over at any time. So if you're worried about, you know, not how do you tell the driver if something, something, you know, urgent is coming up. How do you communicate that? Well, you do that through the app. Or you can also do that on the vehicle's um, screen right here. So the other thing I was gonna say, so why is this an electric car? Why is this a Jaguar I-Pace? Well, first of all, some of the more uh, current new models um, have you know, the steering, the braking, and acceleration, all computer controlled. And so um, you need that. You need that to actually autonomously control the vehicle. The steering wheel is still here, as you can see. And this vehicle otherwise feels normal. There is no, you know, the seat has lots of space. I'm just, I'm just about 6'3". I have head space. I think there's another camera up here. Um, 
and you need all that technology to kind of allow the car to actually control itself. It has a lot of sensors, as you saw, when the car pulled up. Uh, there were many, many sensors. There's LiDAR, radar, cameras. I don't know all the um, ins and outs of the Waymo tech, but after about 10 years in the automotive business, after talking to many other engineers, <laughs> there's, there's a guy just looking at me in, in a weird way and wondering why there is no driver. Um, after talking to engineers, what you kind of want to do is actually combine all those sensors the traditional radar, long range radar, closer range LIDAR, so laser based system, and then cameras, and maybe some other systems, of course, GPS, high precision maps, um, combine it all together so the vehicle has all that information real time, so it's able to navigate streets safely. Uh, like I said, I, I feel like this this car is driving in a pretty uh, confident manner. I don't know if you can tell, but it you know it decelerates at a good speed. It accelerates at a good speed. Let's see how long is my ride? About ten more minutes. There are a couple of, of course, negatives, right? So let me show you on this app. This is not available everywhere. Here, do you see that little square? That's from about airport, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport, through the downtown area. Um, I believe there's about 42 square miles, which is a really sizable area, but still. Uh, for example, if I wanted to go to Scottsdale right now, this car won't go there because it's kind of it's bound by these boundaries because that's the mapping and the data it has um, and that's that's the only thing it can do so it can only drive in this particular area okay we're in the neighborhood now it's making this very very tight turn there's something on the road a trash bag okay it just drove over that little piece of trash it did not try to avoid the trash I guess it uh, assumed that object was not dangerous and it doesn't seem like it was. It's also kind of giving me a little indication of the cars parked, the other vehicles that are going by. So it's kind of reassuring me that it knows that other vehicles are here around me. Well, I, I think, well, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect. I, I thought this was going to be a very, very slow process, very uh, uh, abundance of caution. Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. This car is, of course, obeying all the laws, speed limits and everything, but it's not, you know, really, really be, being super, super cautious. It's able to navigate and live in this world full of human drivers around me and pedestrians and other objects there's something else so why so phoenix is one of the first cities and places where this is available this service um, is available um, and i think i mean there's many reasons for that but part of that reason is good weather right this is january late january it's about 55 degrees outside it's a sunny day, um, so so the weather element is kind of out of the question. Uh, I don't know how it would react to torrential downpour that Phoenix can have, uh, but as far as normal driving conditions, um, I think an autonomous vehicle doesn't have to combat those conditions, and maybe that allows companies like Waymo, Waymo One, to actually you know operate like this um, and i think as, as this technology uh, gets more mature and develops a little bit more um, places like denver 
might be able to get something like this because well of course there's legislation also so you have to be legal for an autonomous um, rideshare service vehicle to operate but also all the other elements have to be there including the weather handling the weather conditions uh, ice snow rain fog any of anything like that Okay, so it says five more minutes. It's it's estimated that exactly. It says I have 105 miles left on my charge in this car. Of course, I don't really mind. I don't care because there's plenty of charge for my ride. And really, as a passenger, I don't really care what happens after I get out of the car. So very curious. I'm, um, I would say I'm, I'm just, it's like a normal ride. I'm fairly relaxed. Uh, before I did this, I, I was thinking to myself, maybe I'll be a little bit nervous. Uh, maybe I wouldn't feel comfortable seeing nobody at the driver <laughs> seat <laughs> in, in this car. Uh, but I feel okay. Let's see what happens when we get on a busier street. Did a little brake check, kind of slowed down, not sure why, still not too bad, there is no sudden, not too sudden. Okay, there's a stop sign coming up, it's making a full stop, and we're getting onto 16th Street. As you can tell, there is some traffic here. wants to go right I decided to pull out and change lanes immediately yeah I would say this car feels pretty confident of course it helps it's a big white car with uh, a lot of sensors on top of it so it's pretty visible to the other drivers you might be wondering okay Andre so you got this car actually it came sooner than it originally said um, I paid what about $17 right um, to go what's four to five six miles um, at lunchtime, this is, it's noon. So is the price comparable to Uber or Lyft? I'll do another calculation, I'll let you know. Uh, but I think so, yes. Um, and that's what Waymo is telling me as well. I was checking into it and they said that the pricing is comparable for taking this ride versus using some of the other companies like Lyft or Uber. Oh. Almost there. Don't forget your belongings. It just told me not to forget my belongings. For your safety, the doors will remain locked when we arrive. Pull the handle twice to exit. The first pull unlocks. The second opens the door. Sweet. Okay, so when it arrives, the doors will be locked. I have to double pull and exit. I am getting weird looks from pedestrians. Anyway, this car is super quiet, super nice. Oh, by the way, um, it also, um, when I was installing the app, it asked me about my music. So it could actually, you could actually set it up to where you can play your music as well. I said no because I wanted to do a video. Oh, it's, is it really 70 degrees now? 
Whoa, look, it just... It just parked. You're here. Please make sure it's clear before exiting. Okay, it said, please exit. And it went to its music mode. Okay, hold on. Here it is, here's the car. Here's the car right there. I'm gonna go close the door before it really starts yelling at me. Here it is, it's pulling away. <laughs> Very smooth, nice and easy. And now the car is doing something else. I'm gonna say, I liked my ride. Very smooth, everything was fine. And I can get some food now. All right. So I hope you um, liked this type of video. I just kind of let it roll and showed exactly uh, what happened. I, I feel pretty good. <laughs> the ride was pretty nice. I paid, what, $17 for a... Uh, um, to do that ride so um, let me know what you think in the comments below and I'm gonna get um, some food I'm really starving thank you very much I'll see you in the next one and check out alttfl.com for everything automotive in one place I thought I was done but I'm not I called the car again in order to uh, get back to the airport and hopefully it will pick me up again. So this is just a random corner. I'm near the pickup. Okay, so it's stopped. I can do unlock. And now I am smarter than I was before. And I can open the door. I also want to check the I want to see the cargo area yeah pretty good cargo close so normal cargo there is not a computer back there okay and I promised you I promised to tell you how much the price uh, differs so let me start the ride. Heading to 44th Street Sky Train Station. And here's what I. Your seat belt is fastened. For any questions, press the call support button to speak to the rider support agent. Oh, it's angry at me. It wants me to buckle up. Now it's reversing. It decided, it decided to turn around in this very tight parking lot. Okay. Here's what I wanted to show you is <coughs> here's the price for the Waymo trip back to the um, airport train station, $15. Here's the same ride I checked at the same time from Uber, $14.92. And here's the same 
ride with Lyft, $15.99. But look, Lyft and Uber suggest highway route, and Waymo chooses more of a side street route. But the pricing is very, very competitive, almost the same. So that's what exactly what I wanted to show you. This is a different car. This is not the same car that picked me up first time. I can tell by the license plate. And so, so now you know how the pricing compares. Now you saw the car pick me up on a street corner instead of a large hub like a train station. Um, so yeah, and you saw the cargo area. So you have all those things and more. Well, so far so good. Um, it's a pretty pleasant experience. I'll see you next time at altfl.com.